Hello, my name is Don Metzger. This video shows how to get started using the Analog Devices Pluto transceiver system and Quick Systems Quick Transceiver software. Quick Systems has several applications which can be used with a variety of analog devices eval boards. In this video, we will both transmit and receive using a single transceiver chip, so we will be using Quick Transceiver. The objective of Quick Transceiver is to allow you to quickly understand the signal quality that you can expect when using an analog device's transceiver chip. Here's the Pluto that we will use. I have a short SMA cable between the transmit and receive ports. I also have a 10 dB attenuator in line with the cable just to provide a little isolation between the transmit and receive ports, but that's not absolutely necessary. There's also a USB cable for connection to the Windows computer. The Pluto USB driver has already been installed using the instructions available from analog devices. When the USB cable is connected to the computer, various actions might happen depending on the autoplay settings in the Windows control panel. In this case, Windows opened a dialog for viewing the contents of the Pluto as an external drive. We will simply close this window. Next, we will start up the Quick Transceiver application. The first thing that we want to do is to set the size of the main window to approximately a square. On the main menu, select Windows and then Active Windows. This brings up a dialog that allows us to choose which windows will be displayed. For the case that we are doing in this video, we will choose Acquired Waveform, that is, the INQ waveform acquired by the Pluto receiver, the acquired spectrum, the constellation, and the measured results. After applying these choices, go to the main toolbar and hit the Arrange Windows button. This will snap the windows into an evenly distributed pattern in the main window frame. Quick Transceiver works with various analog devices eval boards, so we need to tell the application which device we are using and how to communicate with the device. On the main menu, select Instrument and Connection. In the dialog, make sure that Pluto is selected and IIO Local USB as the connection type. Click the Scan button in the USB Parameters section to find all of the analog device's IIO devices which are connected by USB. If only one device is found, then its USB descriptor will be automatically populated. If you have more than one IIO USB device attached, then you can select the correct one using the drop-down list. Next, let's choose an input waveform file. This is the IQ data which will be transmitted by the Pluto. On the main menu, choose File and Transmitter File. Quick Transceiver comes with a variety of example input files. You can find them in Quick Tools, Quick Transceiver, Data. We will use the QPSK at 10 megasymbols per second file. After choosing an input file, the dialog displays various parameters for the data in the file. If the waveform file was created using Quick Generator, then it also contains information about the signal type in the file. If the checkbox near the top of the dialog is checked, then Quick Transceiver will automatically set itself to transmit and receive this waveform type, including the type of demodulation which will be used. Quick Transceiver works with a variety of analog devices transceiver chips. Pluto contains an AD9363. On the main menu, choose Instrument and AD936X Control. Pluto has one transmit channel and one receive channel, so the channel numbers are ignored for Pluto. Let's transmit at 1 GHz with 30 dB of attenuation for the transmitter, and receive at 1 GHz with 30 dB of gain for the receiver. At the bottom of the dialog is the baseband configuration. This was automatically set when we selected the transmitter file because the checkbox was checked in that dialog. In this dialog, you can select from a number of configurations which come installed with Quick Transceiver. The baseband configuration sets the transmit and receive sample rates and creates filter settings inside the AD9363 which are compatible with those sample rates. When the instrument settings are complete, press the Apply and Close button. 
The final step that we will perform in setting up Quick Transceiver is to set the repeat type. On the main menu, choose Processing and then Repeat. Make sure that the repeat type is set to Continuous. On the main toolbar, click the Start button. This will begin the transmit and receive operations. The plot in the top left is a time domain view of the data acquired by the receiver. It is set to display as power versus time. The plot in the bottom left is the spectrum of that same acquired data. In the top right, we can see the final symbols after demodulation. In this case, it shows a familiar QPSK constellation. In the bottom right, we can see various measured results for the acquired waveform, like occupied bandwidth, carrier-to-noise ratio, ESNO, and EVM. After I have a program running the way that I want, I usually stop the execution and save the startup settings. To stop, click the Stop button on the main toolbar. On the main menu, select File and Save Startup Settings. This will save all of the parameters of the program so that the next time that I use Quick Transceiver, it will be correctly set up and I won't have to go through all of the dialogues that we did previously. Each plot window has a toolbar, which can be used to set plot limits and apply markers. On the spectrum plot, we can select the Place Marker tool and click on the plot to place a marker. This allows us to see the power level at a particular frequency. There are other tools on the toolbar which you can explore. Each plot window also has a context menu, which is brought up by right-clicking in the plot. This menu allows us to copy the plot to the clipboard so it can be pasted into another application, like PowerPoint. There are also options for saving the plot image to a file or printing it. At the bottom of the context menu are options for displaying the data. These options vary depending on the type of data being displayed. For the time domain data, we can also view the acquired data as phase versus time or Q versus I. Quick Transceiver also allows for saving of the entire set of windows together, so you don't have to save each one individually. On the main menu, select Windows and Copy Window Image to copy a bitmap image of all the active windows to the clipboard. You can also save the image to a file. You can also change some aspects of how the demodulation process is handled. On the main menu, select Processing and PSK slash QAM. One thing that is useful to do here is to turn on corrections in software for DC offset and IQ imbalance. Let's turn those on and see the effect on EVM. The AD9363 has internal DC offset correction and IQ imbalance corrections, but we can usually improve on those for our particular signal type in firmware or in software. In this case, we will do some software cleanups designed for QPSK. After running briefly, let's stop and observe the effect on EVM. In this case, the EVM improved from 3.47% down to 0.84%. To obtain a copy of Quick Transceiver, Quick Generator, or Quick Receiver, visit quicksystems.com and download the applications. After installing, you can request an activation code by sending an email message to sales at quicksystems.com. Thanks for your time.